All right, I'm going to take a look at the uh, metals market again today. We've got some more uh, bullish action uh, developing. Uh, so yesterday, um, you know, I've, I've been pointing out that the, uh, well, first off, the banks have gotten themselves trapped into just a huge, huge short position that at this point is going to be uh, very hard, if not impossible, for them to get out of. <clears throat> and it's the fuel for a potential short, short squeeze if they... Uh, if they can't get out of it and the market starts to uh, ramp higher, they're going to have to cover those uh, those shorts into a rising market. And that could uh, produce another very strong, aggressive trending move higher like we had earlier in the year. So we had about uh, oh, eight or nine attempts here uh, to break through the 50-day moving average. The banks uh, beat every one of them back until yesterday. And uh, as you can see, uh, gold closed slightly above uh, the 50-day moving average yesterday, and it also closed above this intermediate downtrend line. Uh, this morning, they, uh, you know, hit gold again, trying to push gold back down below this uh, trend line. They, at least so far anyway, they have not been successful. And uh, and gold is uh, holding uh, not only the breakout above the 50-day moving average, but the break out above this uh, intermediate trend line and um, you know as you can see um, we we had you know clearly we had our daily cycle low back here and this is looking very much like this is going to turn into be a, an intermediate cycle low as well and uh, all of these attempts to um, artificially um, take gold back down are failing and all it has done is is managed to um, trap the banks into a larger and larger short position that they're going to have um, more and more trouble getting out of and uh, with the fed you know with the problems in the repo market and the fed pumping about 120 billion dollars uh, a day in, into that market there's just um uh, no matter what happens in the currencies, I'll, and I'll show you the, we've clearly got huge manipulation in the currency markets, but I just don't really see how much of anything can go down uh, in in a sea of liquidity like that, and it's uh, it's creating um, huge risk in the stock market because it's pushing price way too far above the long-term moving averages. And uh, when the profit-taking event finally does start, um, everybody's likely to head for the door at the same time. So there, uh, all of this huge mass of liquidity that's levitating um, virtually everything is creating the risk of some kind of a short-term, put it that way, short-term crash event in the stock market. It's not, not going to be a bull market top. Um, that, I think, is still 10 years away. But but it is creating the conditions um, for some kind of a severe profit-taking event, maybe in January or early February. It is still early in the uh, daily cycle in the stock market, so I wouldn't expect that final uh, crash event bottom anyway until um, end of January, maybe the beginning of, of February. And they're they're going to keep this market propped up through the, uh, you know, at least through Christmas and. And then we've got low volumes into the new year, so I, I'm really not expecting any kind of a crash to begin until sometime in January, in the stock market anyway. Uh, and I uh, warned my subscribers uh, that as that short position got larger and larger in the uh, gold market, that they would, at some point, they would have to um, focus somewhere else uh, in their shorts to uh, try and take down the market. They did this uh, back in here as well. Um, once their shorts in, in gold got so huge that they really just couldn't afford to add any more, they're, they're going to have trouble getting out of that position as it is. Then um, I, I said that they would start attacking silver and the miners to try and take down the metals uh, that way if they could um, bring those markets down, then maybe uh, gold would start to follow. And so you can see that that's exactly what has happened here in uh, in GDX. They've been attacking uh, the ETFs, not necessarily the individual stocks, but they've been attacking the ETFs, trying to take the ETFs down 
hoping that that would drag the rest of the metals sector down as well. So um, I'm going to show you, uh, you know, th this is an ETF. This is a market that can be shorted uh, and artificially suppressed. Now let's convert over to the indexes, which cannot be shorted. All right, this is the, uh, the HUI uh, index. You can see um, GDX is diverging from the HUI. HUI is clearly in an intermediate uptrend, well above the 50-day moving average. And uh, in theory, this uh, GDX really shouldn't be able to diverge uh, from the underlying indexes unless it's just being manipulated, which it is. Now let me show you the XAU. All right, the, the XAU, clearly, uh, this was an intermediate bottom. Um, the XAU is, is actually getting fairly close to testing the recent highs, uh, clearly signaling that uh, an intermediate bottom came back here. So uh, I don't think the indexes will turn and follow the ETFs uh, that are being manipulated uh, down. I think it's the other way around. I think eventually the, the banks are going to lose control of the ETFs and they're going to snap back into alignment with the underlying indexes, which have uh, uh, clearly completed an intermediate bottom and are not far uh, from a breakout uh, above the uh, recent intermediate high. Uh, all right, so um, it, it's been my um, feeling... Um, that once, you know, especially once GDX breaks loose of the uh, interventions and the manipulation to try and keep it suppressed, that uh, it will, during the next intermediate cycle, it will break through this uh, resistance at the baby bull top and uh, probably come up uh, to um, somewhere in this zone, this resistance area here, around 39 to $40 during the next uh, intermediate cycle, which should probably run into... March or April. Most most intermediate rallies tend to last, uh, in a bull market anyway, tend to last uh, three to maybe four months. So uh, once this uh, manipulation breaks and we, we start higher in earnest, maybe that happens next week. And right now, the, the banks are trying to hold everything down into options expiration this evening. But uh, maybe we start higher in earnest in the, in the ETFs as they a snap back into line with the indexes. But I think once this intermediate cycle gets going in, in earnest, I think we're going to break out above the baby bull high and, and probably test this uh, resistance zone here by March or April. 